It's the 80th year anniversary of Japan's invasion of the Philippines and the Pearl Harbor attack this coming December 2021. I am building a diorama to commemorate the Bataan attack in 1942 with the Dragon Hago Tank model kit Hokuman suspension. I'd like to thank Mr. Tony Ferredo and Dan for the historical advice and uniform accuracy. The Dragon Kit came with some photo edge parts. The details were satisfactory and I'd say more added details compared to the Tamiya. I used Mr. Hobby 1000 surfacer for the exhaust pipe and muffler textures and as a primer paint. On the downside, the kit came with the infamous DS vinyl tracks which had been a bane for some modelers. These vinyl tracks have been known to crack or disintegrate over time. Some even have problems with the quality of the vinyl track itself. I bought two sets of the Tamiya Japanese Imperial Army infantry figures for modifications as tank riders. I added tarps using two-part putty, as I've seen old photos with rolled tarps and blankets on the rear of the tank. At this point, I am already visualizing the base layout with the diorama using central board as borders.
I am applying the surfacer to the modified figures to check for errors and other flaws. I use the different cylindrical shaped objects to form the wave of the flag as the putty dries. As you can see here, I am already checking the overall visual layout of the diorama, along with the kit and accessories. Again, not yet painted. Applying the overall black paint to unify the different materials, and it serves as a primer and base paint altogether. I am excited to paint the famous Japanese army tank camera pattern, especially with the yellow stripes on it. But oops, hang on! With all the different camo versions around there and so many renditions and interpretations, it has created so much debate amongst history buffs and modelers. There have been several to wit, but the most predominant and ideal camo pattern that most will agree is the horizontal quadrant yellow stripe pattern commonly used during Japan's specific deployment. I have, however, chose to use the North China 1941 pattern, which according to my advisor, were also deployed to the Philippines campaign, albeit few. In the ideal tank camo pattern and the one ubiquitously seen in the Philippines, the yellow stripes were painted over the tank dividing it in quadrant. The yellow stripes then meet and intersect on top of the turret. <laughs> In the ideal tank camo pattern and the one ubiquitously seen in the Philippines, the yellow stripes were painted over the tank dividing it in quadrant. The yellow stripes then meet and intersect on top of the turret.
due to the issues in Magico with sorghum grass and fields getting trapped in suspension wheels. The wheel and suspension components were inverted with the addition of small wheels fitted to the bell crank axis so the tanks could move freely through the grass. This modified version was used in the Battle of Noman. It is sometimes informally referred to as the Man Manchurian model. I am painting two tank crewmen sitting atop the tank as riders with their corresponding uniform and its colors. I also added one army personnel riding along. Do notice the helmet and the orange-brown colored knee-high leather boots to whip.
For some added drama and detail, I decided to sculpt a young native Filipino boy tending to his pig and piglets. Pigs are a staple source of food and livestock in the Philippines. To make the coconut tree leaves more realistic, a printer cutter is needed. But unfortunately, I was almost scammed by an online seller, so I had to resort to manually making the leaves myself. Yep, so thank you for reaching this point. I would like to offer this video of mine to the brave veterans of the Bataan Death March and Pearl Harbor. Thank you for your service. Mm -hmm.